We'll go to tricuspid valve, and I won't, won't say a lot. Tricuspid valve is a forgotten valve. It's sad if you're a tricuspid valve. Nobody thinks about you. <laughs> Mitral gets invited to all the parties. The aortic is the cool dude. And even the pulmonary valve is cool because it's con associated with congenital stuff. But if you're the tricuspid valve, it's like, you know, who cares? You know, it's a wimpy little valve. <laughs> so we get the next one up, guys. But I think, I, I, and I think what you're going to find, though, is that the guidelines for the tricuspid valve and our thinking of the tricuspid valve is about 20 years behind where the mitral was. If you go 20 years ago, we were thinking of the mitral not differently than we're thinking about the tricuspid valve. Now, the other reason that the tricuspid valve, if you don't get it, that's fine. I can talk about the tricuspid valve. The other reason the tricuspid valve is, is, is such a forgotten valve is that surgeons don't like to operate on the tricuspid valve. Is that because the tricuspid valve is a tough valve and it's hard to do? No, it's because by the time you need an operation on your tricuspid valve, there's so much wrong with you that even if I fix your valve, you're going to die. It's kind of like an open lung biopsy. You know, open lung biopsies aren't hard to do, right? But what's the mortality for an open lung biopsy? 50%. Is it because we're all bad surgeons? No, because they have the disease, and we don't do an open lung biopsy. We've run out of every other option, and we finally operate on you, and half of them are going to die because we're not going to find anything to make them better. Well, tricuspid valve is not too dissimilar. And we used to think if we fixed your mitral valve, the tricuspid would get better. It usually does not. And if we do your mitral valve and you come back four years later with severe TR and I now need to operate on you, your mortality is huge. It goes up to 30% for fixing this little wimpy valve. Well, it's because by that time we've let your heart get so bad. So that, but there's a paper I have in here if we show it. Dave Adams, uh, Joanna Chickwee presented it at the AATS two years ago. And it, what, what Joanna and David showed is that if you take these people where you're doing mitral valve surgery and they do have moderate severe tricuspid regurgitation or they have a tricuspid annulus that is beyond four millimeters, which means it's getting big, or a tenting volume, meaning it's being pulled back in, into the ventricle very far beyond a certain level, that if you don't fix these people, it's just going to keep getting worse. And if you do fix these people, then it doesn't get worse, but there was no difference in real mortality. The interesting is that this is just the tricuspid valve. Notice that papillary muscles are a lot different. For those of you in the lab with me, I tried to show this to you when we cut up this open. You can see these, the, there's a big anterior uh, papillary muscle, but then there's all these little attachments almost straight to the wall. Part of the fibrous uh, thing. You need to know your anatomy. You know, where, where's the AV node? The AV node is the, at the apex of the triangle coke. How do you find a triangle coke? You pull down the eustachian valve. You follow it up to the, to the uh, uh, tricuspid valve, and it's right here. That's why when you see people design rings, they design these rings that go around like this and they don't cut that area. Now, why not have a complete ring? Because what happens is the valve gets big out in this direction. You remember the mitral valve, you know, uh, I think Colin showed you the picture of the moving heart and the anterior part of the mitral valve stayed the same and the posterior part fell down in a way. The mitral always goes down in a way. This one always goes up towards the RV. As long as you fix that, it gets better. There's only uh, one 1A indication for tricuspid valve replacement, and that is if you have uh, functional TR and you're going to be operated on for other things like the tri for the mitral valve. Uh, if you're not operating for other things, there's nothing that's a 1A indication for operating on the tricuspid valve. It'll eventually come. Now remember, in the mitral valve, we have degenerative MR, which has something wrong with the valve. We can always fix that. And we have functional MR, and our operations for functional MR are horrible. They don't work. 60% recurrence to moderate or severe by two years. Colin showed you that. Most of the tricuspid valve stuff we see is functional. It's almost all functional. There's very little real organic mitral uh, tricuspid disease. Ross and I see it from time to time. MD Anderson will send us these people that, that, that you know, have carcinoid syndrome. Those are great people to fix. <laughs> they get better. And these people, you can stop them from getting worse. The hard part is showing that you're going to make them better if all you're doing is their tricuspid valve. Again, we're, we're late, so I'm going to go past a lot of this. I'm going to just show you this. Is, so this is David Adams' paper. David's ring it looks like this. And, and, and you see where did he design his ring? Where it gets big. It's fairly easy to do. And, and this is the algorithm that if you have mod severe tricuspid regurgitation uh, on intraoperative or preoperative echo, I would say preoperative echo. I don't like intraoperative echoes. Then, then he fixed it. No, then he'd look at it, and if it was big, then he would fix it. And if it was small, uh, then he would just leave it alone. 
But in almost all things, so the freedom from moderate greater, if you fixed it, you're going to have less MR going forward. Now, remember, the ones he did fi didn't fix didn't have it to begin with, but some of them were going to develop it. Your, your longitudinal change in pulmonary pressure for the people he fixed were higher to begin with. Why? Because they had TR. The other ones didn't. But they normalized over three to five years. Change in right atrial area, larger for the ones he fixed. Why? Because they had TR. N pretty much normalized over time. Longitudinal change in, in the patients with RV dysfunction, higher than the ones he fixed because they had TR normalized over time. And if you looked at recovery of RV function, it, was, it, it, it normalized over time. Now, it was lower to begin with than the people he fixed. Why? Again, because they were the people with TR. The other people didn't have TR. So what David did show and what Joanna did show is if you do fix these people, over the long haul, they do get better. That's why I say I think we're just 20 years behind. We're going to jump over all this. Some of the challenges of, of fixing this is it pericutaneously is what do, what do we have to use? We've used MitraClip on this. There are people that have designed valves that sit the superior and inferior vena cava. Generally, these people have right heart failures, usually liver, and you usually just need one to try to get rid of their liver congestion. People have designed rings that go around the AV groove. Um, there's a new thing called Triline that we're probably going to be part of that grabs this and gets rid of this posterior leaf. But there's, a, there's an operation called the K operation where we just sew across here and get rid of the posterior leaflet and make it a bi-leaflet valve. And this is just a way of percutaneously recreating what we call the K operation. And then Edwards has got this interesting little thing. They take a balloon they put into your subclavian vein, and it sits in the middle of the tricuspid valve and just sits there and gives the valve something to hit on. That kind of seems weird to me to put a big balloon in there uh, just to give it something to hit on, but it actually works. I, don't, I doubt it's going to be a good long-term fix for this. So the tricuspid valve really is our forgotten valve. We're about 20 years behind. Percutaneous therapy is really new. We really can't make uh, comparisons, but we can't really ignore the tricuspid valve. Poor little thing, it feels really bad. And here's a couple, if you're interested in this, there's a couple of really good papers out there in Jack about this.